This is Caleb Ellsworth for CG Text, and you're watching an intro to 3ds Max original modeling. This is part one of the tutorial, the navigation and tools. The software will of course be 3ds Max 2010, and the focus will be on navigation and changing views and shading, the main toolbar and creation menu, the edit poly tools and their functions, and some other random yet important stuff. Okay, so before we begin, let me just talk a little bit about what I'm going to be showing you today. So, first of all, one of the most important things, or probably the most fundamental thing that you need to know in 3D application is how to navigate. Uh, this includes orbiting your model, zooming in, zooming out, panning your, uh, your frame of reference or your window, and also uh, switching between views and different types of shading on your models. So we're going to be looking at that uh, and some different shortcuts on how to do that quickly and more efficiently. Um, we're also going to be looking up here at, uh, this is the main toolbar across the top here. Um, there's a lot of things up there which we're not going to look at uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, but we are going to look at the ones that get used pretty much almost every time you open the application. Um, we're also going to look at the main title bar here, uh, the main menu bar. But once again, most of these uh, don't get used very often, uh, very, very rarely in, in cases or very specific cases where you, you need certain tools for certain functions. In a regular day-to-day -day polygonal modeling workflow, you don't really look at those too, too much. So we'll briefly skim over those. We're also going to be looking over here to the right. Um, you see this little box of tabs up here. This is known as the command panel. Um, we're primarily going to be looking at two buttons of this command panel. The one that shows this little spark here, which is your creation tab. Uh, this is what you would use to create anything new in your scene. So uh, geometry, lights, cameras, any types of particles, uh, or even setting up rigs and things, you would do from your creation tab. Um, but we're going to be focusing primarily on creating geometry in the form of standard primitives. And, uh, well, basically that's it. And then next over is your Modify tab. Now this Modify tab here, um, this is where you go to modify your individual objects that you've created. So if you create a piece of geometry, you can modify its properties under this Modify tab. If you create a camera or a light, likewise you can modify their properties under the Modify tab. So this is also a very important tab and we're going to be looking uh, pretty in depth at the Modify tab as it pertains to geometry and modeling, not so much uh, towards cameras or lighting or anything else. Uh, moving over to that, we have hierarchy, motion, display, and utilities, and we're not really going to be looking at any of those at all today. Now, uh, that being said, um, the reason that we are going to be skimming past a lot of this stuff and simply just focusing on the, the modeling aspect of 3ds Max is that 3ds Max is, uh, as I'm sure you're quite aware, one of the largest and most complete 3D apps out on the market. And for that reason, there's no way that you could possibly cover it in its entirety in any one tutorial, or even any one tutorial series for that matter. It would take uh, entire volumes of categorically organized tutorials to cover the entire thing. Probably, you know, tens or hundreds of hours worth of tutorial video. So we're just not going to do that. We'll be focusing on uh, probably one of the most basic key functions of any 3D app, which is polygonal modeling. So now that uh, we've done that little overview, why don't we just get started? So first of all, navigation. I'm just going to maximize my perspective view. You'll see we have our, our four views here. We have top, front, left, and perspective. Now I can maximize that by hitting Alt-W. And if I hit Alt-W again, it will bring me back to my quad view. So I'm going to maximize it so we can see what we're doing a little more closely here. Um, so now let's talk about some of the navigation buttons. So one of the most useful and important navigation buttons is to just be able to change your focus of what you're looking at within your frame of reference or your view. So to do that in 3D Studio Max, it's very simple. You just click inwards on the mouse wheel um, in your, your middle mouse button. Just click down on that and you can pan your view around. Very straightforward. Now, if you want to orbit your object, right now we just have the, the grid here, so you can't see me orbiting around an object, but if you want to orbit the object, 
all you do is hold Alt and then click in the middle mouse button and you can orbit around your object. Pretty straightforward. And uh, lastly, you would also want to be able to zoom in and zoom out so you can take a look at your object from a distance or zoom right up close to one of the details. So there's two ways to do that. Um, one is just by scrolling uh, the mouse wheel. If you move it forward or up, then that will cause you to zoom in. And if you move it backwards, that will cause you to zoom out. Another way to do it is to hold Control and Alt and then just move your mouse upwards on your mouse pad or else move it downwards to zoom out. Now, the reason there are these two different methods is um, one of them is a little more fine-tuned and one of them is a little more choppy. The mouse wheel zooms you in in increments. As you can see, it jumps from one distance to another, which is good for quickly zooming in and zooming out. But if you need to get in really close to a specific detail, um, then you'll probably want to use the Control-Alt method so that you can zoom in continuously and get the exact right distance from your detail. So in a nutshell, that's how to uh, navigate in and around 3D space in 3D Studio Max. Now, the next thing I'm going to look at is changing views. So one way to do it is to maximize your quad view, and then you can, say, go over to your front view and then hit Alt-W again. Now you're in front view. Um, actually, to better demonstrate this, I'm just going to throw a box in the scene. Um, I'll explain you how to do that part later, but I'm just putting the box in there now so we can see what we're doing. So, once again, I'm in quad view. I can just go and click in my front view and then hit Alt-W, and now I'm in front view. Alt-W again to back out, go over and click in my top view, Alt-W, now we're in top view. That's one way. Another way is, say you want to do that without backing out into your quad view, you can use the hotkeys to do that. So um, the hotkeys that I use primarily are F for front view, T for top view, and L for left side view. I don't have a hotkey set up for right side view, um, but you know I, I find that I looking at one side of the model usually works for me. When I, when I go in orthographic views, I usually turn on wireframe and I can see what's going on on the opposite side of the model anyways. But if you really need to, there are other ways to do it. Um, and I'm just going to look at that one right now. So some ways to look at other views of your model. If you look in any one of the views here, I'll just hit P to go back to perspective um, to maximize. So you have a menu up here to the upper left and the word perspective is there. So if you click on that, a list of different views will come up here. Um, primarily, you have perspective, orthographic, top, bottom, front, back, left, and right. And um, then eventually, if you start adding cameras to your scene, you can change your cameras here too. I'm not really going to look at any of these other options right now because we just don't have time for that. Uh, basically, just focus on the views. So once again, you can click here and go to bottom or click back up here and say orthographic or perspective, and then you'll go back into your perspective view. So that's another way to do it. Um, and lastly, the one other way that you can navigate your views is this little nifty thing up here in the right corner called the view queue. Now a really easy way to do that is there's this little circle around the view queue. You can just grab onto that circle and uh, rotate it around, and that'll rotate around your object. Uh, but it doesn't actually rotate you around your object, it actually orbits your view around the object. Or if you click on any one side of this box here, then it'll take you directly to that view. So now I'm in right view. If I click the little arrow, that's going to bring me over to front view. If I click the bottom arrow here, now I'm down in bottom view. Now I'm switched over to back view. And if you take this wheel and spin it, then you can get a three-quarter sort of view. Or if you go into your perspective view, on the sides of these, or on the corners of these view cubes, there's also a little box, and that'll bring you perfectly into a three-quarter view. It'll, if you if you hit that, it'll bring you right into an isometric, um, exactly three-quarter view of the object. So this view cube is kind of nifty too, especially if you want to work on, uh, you know, exact uh, perpendicular or 45-degree angles of your object then 
that's a really useful tool as well. So uh, that's views and how to navigate through the views. Next up, I want to show you another really important option um, in any 3D app, which is how to change your shading mode. So, well, right now you look at this box and it has a little um, sort of a bounding box around it. On each corner, it's got these little white lines hovering over it. That's known as the bounding box. Personally, I don't like it. So to disable it, you can just hit J. I almost never leave that on. Uh, if you want to bring it back, you can just hit J again. That's how to get rid of the bounding box. Um, now when we look at our cube, you'll see that we have these white lines around it when it's selected, and then uh, a slightly lighter version of the object color when it's deselected. That's the wireframe. But we also still have the object color, and we have the shading on it. So that's wireframe shaded view. Now, there are two ways, uh, two quick ways to change between these different types of views. Um, the ones that I use primary are wireframe shaded, uh, shaded view to get rid of the wireframe so I can just look at the object with the shading on, and just wireframe view. So the way that I prefer to move between these views is to hit F3 to go back, back and